So rejection sensitivity or rejection sensitive dysphoria is an extreme sensitivity to rejection. And it's really common in people with ADHD. So in this video, I'm gonna break down what it is and show you why all of the advice on handling it is completely upside down. If you're new here, my name's Chris and I'm a creator with ADHD. I help fellow active brains learn the tools to finally focus, grow and get shit done. So rejection sensitive dysphoria is when we perceive other people not valuing social connections with us. Whether it's real or imagined, the idea that someone is rejecting us is crippling. And it's ultimately an emotional defense mechanism where our brain sends a signal telling us that our safety is at risk, our social survival is at stake. And it has a massive impact on our lives. One of the main way it manifests is once we see someone as rejecting us, it feels crippling, it feels painful, and often it's too much to bear. The word dysphoria actually comes from ancient Greek for grief. So it's literally about a feeling of extreme anguish. And one of the things about rejection is that research shows that rejection actually brings physical pain. And when you think about all of the words that we use to describe rejection, hurt, crushed, brokenhearted, they're all pain related words. So what causes it? Well, for people with ADHD especially, it can develop from a lifetime of doing things differently from other people. For example, parents scolding us for forgetting important things, losing friends at school, having a string of failed relationships behind us, losing confidence over time. When rejection starts to become commonplace, then it can manifest within ourselves. And it has a massive impact. Oftentimes it can lead to just trying to avoid rejection outright by simply avoiding painful situations. You know, not asking that special someone out or not speaking your opinion, hiding away from relationships. And over time, this can lead people to lose confidence, stop taking action, stop pursuing the things that they actually want to do because they're scared of returning to that feeling of rejection again. And when we do receive rejection, it feels like it's directly linked to our identity, how we perceive ourselves. So we end up taking rejection really personally. So on one hand, it can sometimes show up in small ways, like simply not asking someone out or not posting something online because you're worried about the reaction, but it can manifest in much bigger ways, like not having important conversations with your wife or simply perceiving that you're being rejected and completely abandoning shit in a relationship, sprinting away from it so you can avoid any more hurt. So ultimately in a situation, once you feel like you've been rejected, you hit the eject button, you convince yourself that it's their loss, and then you just kind of hope the next relationship is gonna be better or different. But in doing that, you're actually disempowering yourself quite a lot. Because if you think about it, the only option you're leaving yourself is to try to avoid situations where you may be rejected. So let me know, do you have ADHD and suffer from rejection sensitivity? If so, then how have you handled it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But I wanna tell you that there's actually a much more powerful way of dealing with the situation. So the first thing to do is to change your perspective on rejection itself. You know, it is true when people say that rejection is usually about the other person, that is true. If someone is truly rejecting you, then they're saying, you don't meet what I am looking for from a relationship, friendship, colleague. And we've done this ourselves, right? Where we've looked at a relationship, friendship, and we've said to ourselves, I don't believe that this is good for me. I don't believe that this is going in the right direction. And you reject that relationship, right? Now, a lot of people can jump straight to upset or angry or feel bad about themselves. And that's a normal reaction. And they immediately decide because they've been rejected, the relationship is done and they just walk away. They kind of think, well, this just isn't the right fit, but they never actually understand why it's not the right fit. They make assumptions, usually based on their own insecurities and just kind of settle on that. But this is actually a massive opportunity that you're leaving on the table to get feedback. Now. I get it. I know the first thing you're going to think is why the fuck would I want to get feedback from someone who doesn't want a relationship with me? But think about it this way. If this were a job application, would you want to know why you didn't get the job? Or if you were a salesperson, would you want to know why you didn't close the deal? Why that person didn't buy the car that you were selling or the computer, whatever it is? Getting data, getting information, feedback itself is so, so valuable and so many people leave it on the table. So let's just break this down. So rejection can be an opportunity to build understanding into the other person. Taking the time to listen to what happened, their thoughts, their feelings, everything. 
walking away doesn't give them that opportunity. You know, walking away from a relationship is understandable, but leaning in and giving them the chance to fully express all of their thoughts, all of their worries, their disappointments, the way that they saw the relationship going, it can be really validating to give that to the other person. But on top of that, it can also be an opportunity to look at your own blind spots, find out where your weaknesses are, your patterns are, the places where you can grow yourself. If you're simply walking away from rejection, then you don't get the opportunity to learn that. And this is crucial, especially for people who have been diagnosed with ADHD as an adult, growing this external self-awareness and understanding more about how others see you rather than how you think they see you or how you hope they see you. This can help you learn more about where your blind spots are, where your weaknesses are, where the places are that you can improve your skills, your internals, etc. Understanding more about how others see you is a crucial life skill that sometimes we can leave on the table when it comes to adult ADHD. So if you ask anyone, do you think you know what other people think of you and how people see you? They'll say, yeah, yeah, I know that. But then when it comes to feedback, when it comes to rejection, then the rug is pulled from underneath them. They don't understand it and they just sort of throw their hands up in the air. So while a lot of people think that they know how other people perceive them, when it comes to direct feedback, oftentimes they can be shocked by it. So developing this external self-awareness is actually a really, really crucial skill. If you wanna learn more about how much our internals, as much as the external affects our ADHD in general, and build yourself a thriving ADHD life, just like our other ultra normal members, then I invite you to join our free focus bootcamp, where I show you the system that's helped me and other members learn to thrive with their ADHD. If you wanna join us, I'll leave the link in the description down below. So, and I'm just simply walking away from rejection, you miss out on the opportunity to truly come together with a solution that can work for both of you. Think about it this way, if you don't really take the time to understand what the other person wants, and you don't truly understand yourself and your own blind spots, then you haven't really got a good shot to come up with a solution that could work for both of you. You know, again, think about it this way, if you don't know them, and you don't really know yourself, then are you really in a position to work together to come up with a solution? And that's the thing, a lot of advice simply talks about reminding yourself that it's somebody else's opinion and, and to just hope for a better outcome next time. But if you think about it, if you take the time to lean in to rejection, to lean in to getting negative feedback, then you're not only doing something for yourself, but you're also doing something for the other person too. Leaning into it can be valuable not only to the other person, but also to yourself as well and potentially lead to a much stronger solution for both of you, which means that you don't necessarily have to walk away from the relationship. And that's the thing with ADHD is that we can jump ship so early when it comes to rejection to try to avoid pain, but it leaves us in a very, very weak position because all we're doing is hoping the rejection doesn't happen again. But the reality is, is that rejection, feedback, negative feelings from other people is all around us. So we're really disempowering ourselves by trying to walk away from rejection and not leaning into it. So in leaning into rejection, you're in a much stronger position than you are from walking away from it, long-term and short-term. So if you want more skills, tips, and strategies for working with your ADHD, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you as always, and with that, I will see you in the next video.